Now, go to the eighth chapter of the book of Matthew. Matthew chapter 8. I suggest you do the, the same as I, I do this every morning when I'm at home. I walk into my bathroom. Right there. There's a sink here and a little, little cabinet here and so forth and so on where my electric toothbrush stands over here and so on. And, and I, I tape these, take scotch tape and a little ruled pad and write out these scriptures and scotch tape them there and just go through them every day. Every day. But then there's times you need to go get the book. Amen. Matthew 8. Verse 13, Jesus said unto Cornelius, go your way, and as you have believed, so be it done unto you. And his servant was healed at that selfsame hour. And when Jesus was come into Peter's house, he saw his wife's mother laid and sick of a fever. That Luke 4.38 said, a great fever. This was not the flu. This was something on the order of typhoid. I mean, this is a deadly thing. A great fever. And he touched her hand. Dr. Luke said he rebuked the fever. Fevers can hear. He touched her hand and the fever left her and she arose and ministered unto them. This is the close of Sabbath. She got up and fixed supper. Totally healed. I get to heaven, we're going to find out her name. And the woman with the issue of blood? I'm going to look, I'm, I'm going to search her out. Girl, what is your name? I'm tired of calling you woman. <laughs> She's going to say Gloria. I, I, <laughs> no, because Gloria has never suffered like that. Never will. And um, anyway, now get this. When evening was come, they brought unto him many that were possessed with devils. And he cast out the spirits with his word and healed all that were sick that it might be fulfilled which was spoken by Isaiah the prophet saying, so this is fulfilled, say fulfilled. Fulfill. Himself took our infirmities and bare our sicknesses. So now we know what sorrows and griefs actually said. He took and bore our sicknesses. Let's put up uh, Hebrews 11 again, and let's look at it from the Amplified. We have to take hold of it. And so we meditate in these scriptures until this comes. Faith is the assurance. I am assured that I'm healed. It is the confirmation, the title deed to my healing and my deliverance from pain or anything else of the things I hope for this. I just hope for it. I'm, I am eagerly expecting it. But it's the proof of things we do not see in the conviction of their reality. Faith, this power proceeding as real fact, what's not revealed to my senses. I am healed whether my body knows it or not. And I'm not moved by what I feel. I'm not moved by what I feel. I'm moved only by what I believe and I'll continue to believe it. Praise you, Jesus. Proverbs 3, 5, lean on, trust in, and be confident in the Lord with all your heart and mind. Do not rely on your own insight or understanding. In all your ways, know, recognize, and acknowledge Him. He will direct and make straight and plain your path. Be not wise in your own eyes. Reverently fear and worship the Lord and turn entirely away from evil. 
It shall be health to your nerves and sinews and marrow and moistening to your bones. You nervous today? Well, quit it. <laughs> now, what do you say? Don't be wise in your own eyes. Well, Lord, what am I going to do in that lawyer's office? Forget about it. Reverently fear and the worship of the Lord turn entirely away from evil. It will be health to your nerves and sinews and marrow and moistening to your bones. Honor the Lord with your capital and sufficiency from righteous labors and with the first fruits of your income. So shall your storage places be filled with plenty and your vats shall be overflowing with new wine. My son, do not despise or shrink from the chastening of the Lord, his correction by punishment or by subjection to suffering and trial. Neither be, neither be weary. or impatient, or loathe, or abhor his reproof. For whom the Lord loves, he corrects, even as a father corrects the son in whom he delights. Happy, blessed, fortunate, enviable is the man who finds skillful and godly wisdom, and the man who gets understanding, drawing it from God's word and life's experiences. And I rest my case. Amen. Are you ready? Yes. Ready to pray the prayer of faith? Yes. Stand to your feet, please. With a smile on your beautiful face. Amen, yes, sir. Smile, glory to God. Say it, this is my healing day. This is my receiving day. You ought to get up with that every morning. This is my receiving day. This is my receiving day. I am a receiver. I am a receiver. Now, my grandson, Jonathan, is an outstanding quarterback. He's no good without a receiver. An incomplete pass is just that. You need a good receiver. And I've seen him just turn and just throw that thing. And the young man that was his receiver just went like this. He needed a receiver. God needs a receiver. Therefore, I say unto you, whatsoever thing you desire, when you pray, Believe that you receive it and you shall have it. Receive means to take. The Lord dropped that into glorious heart. You have to take it. You have to take it. That's all over the New, the New Testament. You have to take it. This is a life game. And it's life or death. Not any of us going to get out of it alive. <laughs> Some of us are just going to stay longer than others. Did you notice in the Bible they don't talk about burying the body, they talk about burying the bones. Because the body decays, but the bones are still there. You remember what happened? They took a dead man looking for a place to bury him. The Midianites came over the scene and so they just threw him in there and he hit Elisha's bones. And there was enough anointing in that dead prophet's bones to raise that young man from, a de from the dead. The bones of Elisha. The bones of Elisha. That's what Kenneth E. Hagen was, Hagen was preaching on July the 30th, 1977 at camp meeting. He sat down up there 
And, and he said, I was sitting here and, and I just kept getting the bones of Elisha, the bones of Elisha. So I'm going to preach on the bones of Elisha. And he's preaching on prophets. And he was giving the invitation that night and he began to call my name. And he said, finally, he said, Ken Copeland, you're going to have to move over into that healing ministry a little faster than you thought you would because Jesus is coming. And whether you want to or not, by the direction of the head of the church, whether you want to or not, you're going to walk in the office of the prophet, the seer, seer. Standing right in the pulpit, it'll roll off in front of you like you saw it on a TV screen. And he compared that with the bones of Elisha. And I thought, my bones. <laughs> Well, my bones are still in action. Praise God. And your bones are healed. Your bones are healed. Praise God forevermore. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Praise you, Lord Jesus. Now, here's what Brother Hagin would say. He would say, plug in with faith. Make an effort. That's what the Lord told Brother Hagin when he was completely paralyzed. On the, and he'd been there 17 months. And he got on Mark 11, 23 and 24. And, and he said, I knew somehow that, that my healing was in those verses and was sustaining prayer. He just flat wouldn't quit. And he just kept on and kept on and kept on. He said, I finally saw it. I have to believe it before I feel it. It was that simple. He kept trying to feel of his heart. And he said, no, I'm not going to feel of it anymore. And, the, and he came in his spirit. The Lord said, you believe you're healed. He said out loud, yes, I do. And he said, healed people ought to get up this time of day. So he got up. His, his legs were completely paralyzed. So he pushed his legs out onto the floor. He said it felt like two chunks of wood. He said, I, I couldn't feel it. But he said, I grabbed the bedpost and he's hanging there. He said, I want to announce to, to, to God the Father, God the Son and the Holy Ghost, all the angels in this room and every devil of hell that I am healed from the crown of my head to the soles of my feet and I'll walk. And he said suddenly, now he was so born so premature that his whole chest cavity, his heart and everything else, he said when he drinks something hot or cold, it felt like it'd go way over here before it ever got down to his stomach. A deadly blood disease. And he said, I felt needles in my legs. It was those nerves coming to life. He said it hurt. And he said, I, I was laughing and crying all at the same time. He said, I didn't care about bad. It hurt. I could feel it. I could feel it. I could feel it. And then he said, in a few seconds, I was standing up straight and I was walking around the room. He said, I only weighed 89 pounds. And he walked off, glory to God. And he preached this gospel till he was 86 years old. Now, I want you to lift your hand. If you believe this gospel that I have preached to you this morning and you're ready to take and receive the power of God unto salvation for your spirit. Are you ready? Yes. All right, do it like this. Say this. I believe the gospel that I have heard. I believe the gospel that I have heard. And I am ready, ready to receive the power of God, power of God unto salvation. salvation. Now, now, for my spirit for my mind, for my, mind. My, body. my body, I'm standing on my feet right now, I'm on my feet right now. 
Now, anybody that can't stand up, you stand up in your heart and mind. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Now, I'm going to say something here. I take authority over all sickness, all disease, over all devils. Now you shut your mouth and you get out of this room. Say it, I'm delivered. The gospel that I have heard is the power of God under my salvation. I confess Jesus Christ as Lord over my life, Lord over my spirit, Lord over my soul, and Lord over my body. I receive the power of God to make me sound, whole, delivered, Say, heal. heal. Now, now, I act on the word of God, word of God. And, receive and receive the power of God. Sickness, disease, and pain. Sickness, disease, and pain. I resist you in the name of Jesus. Sickness, weakness, and pain. Sickness, weakness, and pain. You are not the will of God for me. I enforce the word of God on you. I will not tolerate you in my life. Leave my presence now. Get out. I will never allow you back. My days of sickness and disease are over. I am the saved. I am the healed. healed. The power of sickness has been broken forever over my life. life. Jesus Jesus bore my sickness, sickness, weakness, weakness, and pain. pain. I am forever free. Sickness shall no longer lord it over me. Sin shall no longer lord it over me. Fear shall no longer lord it over me. I have been redeemed from the curse of the law. I proclaim my freedom in Jesus' name. <clears throat> today. today, when? Today, today, today. today. The, gospel the gospel is the power of God unto me, unto salvation. I receive the gospel. I act on the gospel. I'm made whole in Jesus' name. Now act on it. Move. Do something. Praise God. Walk if you can't walk. Run if you can't walk. Bend over. Oh, glory to God. Glory to God. You are healed in your feet and your toes. You're healed in your legs and the calves of your legs are strong. Oh, and your thighs are strong. Oh, and say, my liver is strong. My eyes are strong. And I can move in here. Glory to God. Hallelujah. My jaws are healed and well. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Do what you couldn't do. And just get, I mean, just, just, just. Just get loud about it. I'm healed. I'm healed. I'm well.
Brother Copeland, this is Sister Malika. The doctor told her that she has cancer in the brain, and one of the effects of that is her right eye. She has a lot of pain. She said about three minutes ago, that pain left her eye. Thank you, Lord. I believe that the healing power is taking the cancer away, amen. Stretch your hands out, put your hand on the back of the seat or something. You're making contact at the same time. Thank you, Jesus. In the name of Jesus, whose I am and whom I serve, I speak to the evil spirit life in any cancer re- mutant cell and die and come out of this body. This body is the temple of the living God in the name of Jesus. Oh, glory to God, glory to God, glory to God, glory to God. Thank you, Lord Jesus. That first day in healing school with Oral Roberts. And there was a little woman, there had no arm, one of those army cots, you know. She was on there and she just kind of emaciated away. She was the first one that day. And so I was going to do what he said, release my faith. And I said, now the name of Jesus is going to be my point of contact. And I went in the name of Jesus. And he was standing right here next to me. And you can't imitate this. It was such a powerful anointing. You fire unclean spirit in the name of Jesus whose I am and whom I serve. You take your hands off of God's property now. And she spit that tumor out on the floor. Well, it's on the ground. It was in a tent. And there it was. It was still alive. It was still moving. Thank you, Jesus. (laughs) <laughs> oh, come on, let's give him praise. Come on, let's give him praise. Thank you, Jesus. Now, it's not going to be long until that chair is a thing of the past. Well, it's about... victory every day and ever since Sacramento conference came by that time I was very weak I didn't know who was going to bring me but I just registered I registered with my husband and he couldn't come because he's working but I just believe that someone is going to bring me up here and I'm going to see brother Copeland face to face Oh God, I came this morning with a lot of pain and I was sitting there. And it's just God. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. <laughs> Hallelujah. Thank you. Jesus. Give the Lord glory, everybody. <laughs> wow. Woo. Hello, I'm Spencer Nordyke. Today is offering day on the broadcast. And I want to give you the opportunity to sow into the word that you've heard this week. In Galatians chapter six, verse six and seven, it says, let him who is taught in the word share in all good things with him who teaches. Do not be deceived. God is not mocked for whatever a man sows, that will he also reap. Now, God wants you to know that you've sown into a ministry that is preaching the word around the world and you are going to reap the blessing that comes from being a part. Thank you, partners, for praying and sowing into KCM. Your giving has helped us to send the uncompromised word of faith from the top of the world to the bottom and all the way around the middle on every available voice. These voices include radio, print, digital platforms, events, and Kenneth Copeland Bible College. That's my favorite. I'm one of the instructors in the Bible College. 
All of this is made possible through the generous giving of our partners. And for more than 55 years, Kenneth and Gloria Copeland have been faithful to teach and preach the word of faith. And as a result, generations of families across the globe have received Jesus and continued to be touched by the love of God. You're a part of that legacy. Let me pray over your offering. Heavenly Father, in Jesus' name, Everyone who sows today, I release a flow of miracles like they've never seen before. Father, I thank you that they have sown and they're reaping now. They're coming into a season of reaping and receiving like never before. Father, we thank you and give you all the glory in Jesus' name. Amen. If you missed any of the broadcasts this week, or if you want to watch a message again, go to kcm.org or KCM's Roku channel. Next week on the broadcast, Brother Copeland welcomes special guest, Dr. Melvin Barney Esquire. He's a pastor and he's a lawyer, and he'll be talking about the authority of the believer and some really amazing things that you want to hear. The power of attorney to use the name of Jesus is such an important truth for us to have so that we can act on his behalf. This is a powerful message for all believers. So this is Spencer Nordyk reminding you that God loves you, we love you, and Jesus is Lord. Kenneth and Gloria Copeland would like to thank you for praying and sowing into Kenneth Copeland Ministries. We are believing with you for your abundant harvest. To sow your financial seed, you can text the letters KCM to 36609, go online to kcm.org give, or call 800-600-7395. Your giving has helped send the word of faith from the top of the world to the bottom and all the way around the middle. Find something life-giving on kcm.org, your study center for victory. View the Believer's Voice of Victory broadcasts on demand and study along with the daily broadcast notes. Or download the audio podcasts to listen on the go. Watch prior KCM events for hours with truth going in your eyes and ears wherever you are. Get real help for real life problems. Follow our guide to believe, speak, pray, learn, and apply your way to results from your couch, desk, or kitchen table. Stay focused on truth by reading the devotional from faith to faith every day. Read interactive BVOV magazines and click to unlock more content in each issue. Get a faith boost from testimonies of real life success from people just like you. Find information on what partnership means and take advantage of the resources provided just for you. Read archives of Kenneth Copeland's partner letter and download free books from our bonus library. Over 50 titles available to read on your phone, computer, or e-reader. KCM.org meets you where you are.